Our next topic are the spinal meninges. So the spinal cord is protected with three layers of tissue called meninges. So to understand the function of the meninges, let's talk about my car meninge analogy. Meep, meep. That was my uh, attempt at a car horn. Okay, so here we have you driving in a car and there's a tree and you're happy and happy and so there is your car and then there's a tree and you're driving along and then what happens is <coughs> you crash into the tree. So this asks a question. What stopped the man from hitting the tree? Answer, his car. Next question, what stopped the man from hitting the car? And the answer is his seatbelt. And so in looking at this step dissection of a posterior lateral view of the vertebral column, meninges, and spinal cord, we have the following. There's our passenger, there's the car, and there's the seatbelt where the passenger is the spinal cord, this delicate thing that we're trying to protect. That's the whole reason we have all that protection is to make sure that the passenger, in the case of spinal cord, is protected. It has to be very at a very homeostatic environment, both physiologically and physically. So the vertebral column, all those vertebrae, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral vertebrae, their function is to protect the spinal cord when someone kicks you in the back or you fall down. But what then is protecting the spinal cord from the vertebral column? The answer is the meninges. They, these dura mater, arachnoid, and pia mater, and associated um, cere cerebral spinal fluid, act as the seatbelt for our spinal cord. So here are the meninges. There's dura mater, arachnoid matter, and pia mater. Let's talk about each one of these. First, the dura mater. And the dura mater is this dense collagenous connective tissue that forms a sheath around the spinal cord and that each segmental level forms the epineurium as that nerve exits the intervertebral foramina. And so that dura mater comes, extends out and becomes that epineurium, that connective tissue protective uh, sheath. Um, and so we look at this cross section and then blue, there's our dura mater uh, surrounding the spinal cord and then coursing out bilaterally. The arachnoid matter is the next deeper layer. Arachnoid because it looks like spider webs, arachnoid for spider. And there's our arachnoid matter. And then right on below the arachnoid matter, there is a space called the subarachnoid space. Prefix sub means below. So in purple, there's our arachnoid matter. And then that arrow is showing the subarachnoid space and the, the trabeculae makes those spider web, uh, web appearances that go to the pia mater. And that subarachnoid space is filled with uh, cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. CSF, cerebral spinal fluid. And then next is our pia mater, and this is the part of the, the loose connective tissue that's just uh, completely uh, knitted to the spinal cord, where only a couple of places can you differentiate pia mater. But there's all that pia mater surrounding the outside, and the only place you can tell the difference, in blue there's a pia mater, are these teeth-like projections that go from the spinal cord to the surrounding dura, uh, dura mater, and they're called dentate ligaments because they look like sharp teeth or denticulate ligaments, and they tether the spinal cord laterally to prevent the spinal cord from jiggling back and forth. So let's look at, at this uh, vertebral column. You can see an orange cervical, purple thoracic, green lumbar, and pink sacral vertebrae, and the dura mater courses all the way from the top to the bottom. Uh, recalling, however, that the spinal cord ends between the L1 and L2 level. So there we have spinal cord. It goes down to L1, L2, but the dura mater goes all the way down to the bottom. So in that orange arrow represents, so what is in that space between the conus medullaris, bottom of the spinal cord, and the bottom of the dural sac? So it's those spinal nerves because here we can see the uh, spinal cord levels with the associated spinal nerve levels in color. And so the cauda equina are those nerve rootlets descending from the caudal region of the spinal cord on their way to exit to their associated vertebra. So the cauda equina, those nerve roots, and the cerebral spinal fluid fill that bottom of the vertebral canal where the dural sac is located.